In this video, I'll show you how to create this countdown animation using Frame Motion and even how to use this with a slider. Here's a bare bones setup with a clock that counts down and there's some controls down here for adding some more time. Most of the animation logic is gonna sit in a separate component that we'll create inside the components folder, create a new file, we'll call it animated count. Let's add the props for this component. So we'll need a numeric value. We'll pass in a padding, which will be for example, on this clock, we want the seconds to always have two digits and a default duration for each animation. And we'll set that by default to be 0.8 seconds. Now let's define the types for these. So value will be a number, padding will be an optional number, and duration will be number. So this component is gonna get passed in some sort of value to show. So for example, the number of seconds here. To animate each of these digits, we need to split this number into each digit and then animate each digit separately as it needs to change. So first, I'm gonna generate an array of the digits. So here in the component, I'm gonna create a display values array, and this will be value.toString. Then I'm gonna pad it if needed, and we'll, this is where we use the padding we'll pass in, and we'll pad it with zeros, and then we'll split on a character basis. Then we'll return this list displayed out. So we'll just do a React fragment here. We'll map over the display values. So map, we'll take the value and the index. And we'll return a span where we'll just show the item. And I'll add class names of inline block and importantly, tabular nums. This will ensure each digit is the same width so that you don't have weird morphing. Okay, so this is the bare bones. Let's just go ahead and pass it in and use it. So here, instead of the span, I'll use animated count. And instead of doing this, we'll just take this value and we'll pass it as the value prop and then self close this. And we'll do the same thing down here for the seconds remaining. So we'll copy this and we actually don't need all of this logic. We just need the value itself. So this part, this extra curly brace, get rid of this. And we're getting an error, and this is because we haven't passed a custom key prop to each of these spans. So this is what we'll use the index. So I'll just pass in a string combination of n and the index. Okay, so if I refresh the page, this now is still working and it still looks the same, but now we're using this custom component. So let's animate these digits. So this span is gonna become a motion span. And now we need to set up the key properties. So initial, animate and exit. So initially to be before this element shows up on screen, I'll set the Y to be 12. So coming from below, I'll set the filter to be a blur of 12 pixels and opacity will be zero. And I'm actually gonna copy this for the remaining two because it'll be very similar. For exit, we're gonna keep the blur and the opacity, but the Y will be negative 12, so we'll go up animate, which will be when it actually comes on screen normally, y will be zero, so it's normal position. We'll remove the blur and we'll set opacity to be one. And then for all these transitions, I'm gonna set some attributes. So transition, make this a spring animation, and the bounce is 0.35, and duration will be the duration that we pass in, which by default will just be 0.8. If we try this, we get the entrance animation, but the exit animation isn't showing. And that's because we need to surround all this in animate presence. So I'm just gonna replace this fragment with animate presence and add a mode of pop layout so that there's a smooth transition. So now when we refresh, we get the entrance and exit animations for each digit. Now let's just add some more time. We can see how this is also transitioned appropriately. Now, given there's a lot of animations here and someone could just spam one of these plus 10, 30, 60 seconds, which could potentially come in the way of the animations if it's made animation, I thought I would add a debouncer. First, I'm gonna make this display values a state variable. So display values, set display values, use state. And the default value will just be what we have here. Paste it up here. But now I'm gonna add a use effect. And on this use effect, which will take value as a dependency, I'm going to add a slight delay to updating the value of display values. So I'll use a set timeout for this. We'll call it debouncer set timeout. And if value is not null, which it shouldn't be, then I will set display values to be 
essentially the same thing we have up here. So let me just copy this. And because we have a set timeout, I will do a cleanup function where I'll clear the timeout. And that's the bouncer. On this timeout, we need to set a time. I'm going to set 50 milliseconds here because this is delaying the animation technically when we count down. So you don't want to make it too big, otherwise it'll just look off. Now when we try this, visibly it shouldn't look that different. It still is operating on one second intervals, but now it does prevent weird situations when you, if you just start spamming these plus 30 and 60 seconds, for example. So one final touch on this countdown timer, because it is a timer, I thought it'd be nice to do something fun when the timer hits zero. So I'm just going to have a simple shake animation of this entire card, sort of like an alarm clock when it goes off. So I went ahead and updated the div that's surrounding this card, made a motion div, added an animate property on rotation, and when seconds remaining is equal to zero, I use keyframes to define a series of rotation values which will simulate a shake animation. And then I've just set delay of one second, so this will happen one second after we hit zero. It'll go on forever, and each little jiggle will have a one second delay in between. So now let's hit save and watch this. And there you go. There's the shake animation. Now, before we go, I wanted to show you another way we can use this exact same component. So here's a simple rating slider, rating something, let's say, from 0 to 5. And as we change the value, we want this display value to animate. So here we have the span where we're showing the current value. I'm just going to replace this with the same animated count. We'll pass this as the value. We'll stop, close this. Remember, by default, we have a padding. So let's override that so there's no padding. So padding will be equal to 0. And now when I change it, it's a little bit slow for my liking, the animation, so let's shorten it up. So maybe let's make the duration 0.3. Now when I refresh, now as we switch, there we go. Much snappier. So that's it for this video. YouTube thinks you should check out this video next. Leave a like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.